Hello everyone and welcome to Programming and Access 2013, the advanced course. My name is Steve Bishop and in today's video we're going to be talking about creating an ODBC connection to the SQL Server. Now an ODBC connection is a stored connection on a computer that allows access from that computer to the SQL Server database. And that's something that you're going to need to put on every single computer in your environment that's going to be running that access database as the front end. If you are talking about a very large environment where you're having multiple computers on a domain, you can actually set up this ODBC connection in something called group policy. Now to do so, you're going to want to talk to your system administrator. They should be familiar with group policy, but they will be asking you about some of the important information, some of the details of what they need to put in this ODBC connection. And that's what I'm going to show you along with uh, how to actually do it on the system itself directly. So let's go ahead and hop out here. And I've got my desktop open here and I'm running Windows 8.1. Uh, similarly, if you're running Windows 8, you're going to go through the same process. But if you're running an older version of Windows, say Windows XP, uh, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, you're going to want to go to the Start button. And of course, it doesn't work here on mine. But you're going to want to click on the Start button and then go to Control Panel. You might have to go to Settings and then Control Panel, or you might have Control Panel as one of the options from the Start menu. Uh, either way, you, you definitely want to just get yourself over to the control panel if you don't already know how to do that. Okay, so for Windows 8 and 8.1 users, you're going to move the mouse up here and just make sure you're in the desktop view, okay? You don't want to be doing this from the tile view. You need to go into the desktop and move your mouse up into the upper right-hand corner and then go down here to settings and then there is the control panel. So in the control panel view here, some of you may see a view that looks like this. You're going to want to go to view by and change it from category to either large or small icons. Now, once you've done that, you should see this administrative tools option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And if I look down here, you'll see ODBC data sources. I have a 32 bit and a 64 bit. Now, some of the older operating systems, Windows 7 and older, if they are a 64-bit version of that operating system, so if you're running Windows 7 64-bit, you will not see this 32-bit ODBC data source in this list. The only time you need to run this 32-bit version of the ODBC data source administrative wizard is if you are running either a 32-bit version of Access or a 32-bit version of SQL Server, okay? So if you're running a 32-bit version of either of those two pieces of software, you're going to need to do the ODBC data source 32-bit. But of course, if you're running Windows 7 or Windows Vista or Windows XP in 64-bit, you don't see this 32-bit option. So how do you get there? Well, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up here, I'm just gonna go into the toolbar, or into the address bar, you could also just go to my computer and go uh, and just follow down, you know, drill down to the following directory. I'm going to go to the C drive, which holds my Windows folder. And inside the Windows folder is the SysWow64. If you don't have a SysWow64 directory, I got a news for you. You're not running a 64-bit operating system. You're running a 32-bit operating system. So... If you are running a 64-bit operating system, you should see this folder, and inside this folder is the ODBC AD32.exe. This is the 32-bit version of the ODBC data source administrator. Okay, so once again, if you are running either the 32-bit version of Access or 32-bit version of SQL Server, and you're putting it in, and you're setting up access to run on a 64-bit operating system, you're going to need to use this 32-bit version, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. I happen to have a 64-bit operating system with a 64-bit SQL Server and a 64-bit uh, access database. So I'm going to go ahead and use this ODBC data source 64-bit. And if you are using the 32-bit version, don't worry. The interface, the way that you set everything up is pretty much the same. So you won't get lost, I promise. 
Okay, so now that I've got the ODBC Data Source Administrator uh, opened up here, you'll see that there are several tabs running across the top here. The two that we're interested in are the User DSN and the System DSN. User DSN is for when you want to set up an ODBC connection just specifically for that user, for the user that's currently logged into the system. If you use System DSN, then that means you're setting up the ODBC connection for everybody that connects to this computer. So uh, if somebody else were to log into this computer, they would have the same DSN available to them. And if I you put it under the US user DSN, then it's only available to me. Okay, but I'm going to set mine up under System DSN, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the Add button. Now, when I click on the Add button, you'll see here is a list of drivers, and some of these may look a little bit familiar. The ODBC driver 11 for SQL Server, the Access Text Driver, Access Driver, and then here's the SQL Server Native Client 11.0. This is the one you want to run, okay? Whatever the SQL Server native client is, you may have 10.0 or 9.0, depending upon the SQL Server version that you, that you purchased or downloaded. So we've got SQL Server native client. I'm gonna go with the 11.0. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Finish. Now, I need to give my ODBC data connection a name. And this name is very important because I'm going to refer to it a little bit later on when I connect my Access database to it. I prefer to name these whatever the name of the database is. So in that case, it would be Northwind. So that way I know that I'm connecting to the, you know, when I try to refer to the ODBC data source, that it, uh, connection called Northwind, that I'm going to be connecting to the Northwind database. Then it's gonna ask me, which SQL server do you want to connect to? And this can be a little bit tricky. If you click on the drop down arrow, what's gonna happen is, you, uh, the ODBC data source uh, administrator here is gonna go out and look on your network for any available SQL servers. If you're running SQL server on any other server, you're just going to need to select it from the list here. Or you could type in the IP address or the name of the server right there, uh, you know, right here where it says server, you could just go ahead and type it in there. But since I am running the SQL server as an express on my local system, if I tried to use steves-pc, I've seen that cause problems. So what I need to do is if I'm gonna be running SQL Server on my local system, it's often a good idea to put in a forward or a backslash like this, along with the name of the instance of the SQL Server that's running. How do you find out the name of the instance? Well, if you write, uh, excuse me, if you go to, uh, I'm just gonna open up my uh, this PC here and I'm gonna go to this address section again some of you may recognize this little uh, this little um, um, window that I'm gonna pull up here it's called services.msc you can also get to this through the uh, administrative tools again up here you can see there's the services option here this is the same thing so you can either type services.msc or you can go to the administrative tools and just select services right there and if you scroll down through here you'll see sql server and then in parentheses i have sql express the name of the instance of this sql server is sql express and if i had multiple instances of sql server running on this computer they would be named differently so i might have SQL Express, I may have MS SQL, I have, you know, any number of ways that I might have named it when I did the installation of SQL Server. But my instance that's running is SQL Express. So I'm going to go ahead and put after this backslash SQL Express. So you're welcome to do that. Uh, if even if the uh, database service resides on another network or on another computer on your network, you may want to go ahead and include the SQL service instance name. Okay, so I'm going to go and click on next. And of course, my instance of SQL server is running only on integrated Windows authentication. I'm not running mixed mode. So I don't have an SA account or anything like that. If you were using an SA account, you would need to change this to with SQL server authentication and then put in the user, uh, the ID and the password. But I'm just going to go ahead and use Windows authentication. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. 
And now it's going to ask me uh, a, a few different options here. The only one that I'm really interested in here right now is the change the default database to. I'm going to go ahead and check this. And I'm going to change it from the default to the actual database that is on my SQL Server. You'll notice I have Master Model, MSDB, Northwind, Report Servers, SQL Express, Report Server, SQL Express, TempDB, and TempDB. Those are all the databases from my SQL Server here, including these two databases and my Northwind database, plus the system databases. If we were to use the default instead of, uh, you know, if we were to just allow it to be the default instead of selecting it here, and you left it change, uh, you know, uh, just use the default instead, then that unfortunately would give basically unfettered access to everything in here. And we don't really want that. We want to make sure that the ODBC driver is pointing to a very specific database. And preferably, again, the name of the ODBC connection should be the same as this database that you're connecting to. Okay, so all of that's all done. I'm going to go and click on Next. I don't need to do anything here. Some of you may want to encrypt your data. Some of you may want to log the ODBC driver statistics to a log file. You can do that if you'd like, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish here. And now that I've got all of my settings set up, I'm going to go ahead and click on this test data source button and I should get tests completed successfully. This basically goes through a verification process to make sure that all the settings that I set up earlier in this video were completely correct and I can actually connect to that database and everything works just fine with the authentication that I have. If you do not get this test completed successfully, you may want to review what the results are here and see if you can figure out why, uh, you know, maybe you put in a wrong password or uh, maybe you don't have authority to connect to the SQL database, something like that. So just make sure that this says tests completed successfully. Then you can go ahead and click OK and then OK again. And now we can see under the System DSN tab, I have my Northwind ODBC database connection. And I have a it's under 64-bit platform. And there's my driver as a SQL Server native client 11.0. So that is how you set up an ODBC data source connection on a computer directly. And again, if you're going to hand, you know, if you have a domain with multiple computers that are all going to be running this access uh, front end on it, and you need to get that information over to your administrator so they can set it up through group policy, you can just give them the same information that that. Uh, that I've shown you here with the name of the database connection, uh, you know, of the ODBC data source connection, the server with the SQL server instance that you need to connect to. They're going to need to know which type of authentication. They're basically going to get prompted for the same information as they're going through with group policy. So uh, you should be able to give them all of that information when they ask you for it. So there you go. We have our Northwind ODBC database connection set up. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually link your access database up to this ODBC data source connection. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the, in the uh, comments below. And of course, don't forget to like, favorite, and, and uh, subscribe. Thank you so much.